Hi, and welcome to School of Hustle. I'm your host, Sarah, and this is the show where we chat with everyday entrepreneurs about everything that goes into starting a new venture. In 2019, 67 million domestic and international travelers spent a total of 44 billion in New York City. This spending directly supported nearly 300,000 jobs in the tourism industry alone. And today, I'll be interviewing one of my favorite sightseeing activities in the city. It is Classic Harbor Line and is a yachting company that offers a wide range of experiences to tourists and locals alike, such as sunset sails, architecture cruises, and much, much more. They started in 1994 in Newport, Rhode Island, and since then has expanded into four cities throughout the United States. And today, I'd like to welcome the man who started it all. It is Rick Scarano. Rick, it is a pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you about it. You know, I was literally on this exact boat about three days ago <laughs> with my parents. I think Classic Harbor Line is such a wonderful experience in the city and I've talked about you guys so much on my YouTube channel so it's such an honor to finally meet you who started the company in 1994, 25 years ago. Uh, I'd love to just hear a little bit about your background and um, why you decided to get into this. Well, even, I mean, as, as kids, we grew up on a, a little camp on, in upstate New York, mm -hmm. and we had, we were just playing with boats all the time. And Brother John uh, was just always on the sailboats yeah. all the time. And so it just, just evolved. He was just fanatical about it from the time he was uh, a little kid. He was drawing pictures of schooners when he was in the first grade. Wow. And so he's designed everything that we see here and just about everything that we operate. Really? So are all of your boats uh, designed by him and, and built by your company? Yes. I mean, we, we uh, salvaged an old wood boat that okay. was going to uh, probably wind up getting cut up if we didn't yeah. uh, a couple years ago. But we operate nine boats okay. and we operate ten boats. Nine of them are designed and built at our yard. And they're all designed by uh, John. Well, they're so beautiful. I think uh, you guys call it a 1920s style yacht. Is that is that the correct terminology? Yeah, I mean for the for the Manhattans, that's what we're that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Similar to the old commuters that the uh, ultra rich used to get to their upstate or Long Island estates in yeah. that type of thing. The schooners are more like uh, 1860s, 70s pilot schooners. They're really okay. taken after the the. The pilot schooners were just very cool because they were they were designed for being seaworthy and fast. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to carry goods. They didn't have to. They had to get out to the sailing ships first, so they'd be going out like 600 miles okay. to get to get their pilot on board because if they didn't get their pilot on board, they didn't get paid. So it was <laughs> right. a real competition, and it evolved into the the pilot schooners that are so. Uh, which is such very interesting, fast, uh, well-designed boats, and that's that's really how Schooner America came along. And, how and the Schooner America is that one right there, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the big that's a quasi replica of a boat that was built in 1854 uh, uh, and sailed to Europe, wow. across the ocean and then beat every boat the Brits could put up against it. So. so you pull your designs for boats from history, it sounds like. Well, the design, not so much, but mm -hmm. the profile and the yeah. look of it. Uh, yeah. If you look at the underbody of America, say, it's totally different than mm -hmm. what was built in the 1850s with newer materials and technologies. We can, we can do a lot more to make it uh, more practical. Faster. Totally. I mean, coming onto this boat, or really any of your boats, I actually had my 30th birthday on one of their boats. So uh, you just, it's so cozy and it's so luxurious. And I think that's the thing that stands out. And, and you guys offer m multiple experiences. You have tours, like the architecture tours, which are beautiful. You have um, a bar. Um, you've previously had brunches and, and cheese tastings and things like that. And so it's such a well-rounded experience and it's something that other boats don't offer. So I know that you, you and your brother loved sailing, but where did you come up with the idea of let's go further than just sailing, let's actually make this an experience for people? Yeah, well, uh, 
One, one of the incentives for me to, to build a powerboat and to circumnavigate Manhattan was my experience on Circle Line. And mm -hmm. uh, Karen and I did it on New Year's Day once, and since then it's just been a tradition yeah. since 2005 on one of our own boats when we first uh, built a powerboat down mm -hmm. here. But we wanted to do it in a different way. Yeah. I mean, I love the experience in, in, uh, on the Circle Line, but it, we've always been uh, uh, sort of a niche, and our niche is just this traditional style in a much more intimate atmosphere. Yeah. So you're not on a on on what some folks might call around. a real head boat with, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it's a, it's more yachty, it's more comfortable, yeah. it's more intimate, and it's just a, a really a much nicer feel, I think, and a nicer experience for folks. 100% agree with that. And that's yeah. why I always go to here instead of your competitors. Um, so you can, Im I mean, I can imagine that uh, boats, are quite expensive. So when you're starting a company um, around boats, there's a lot of funding that goes into that. So how did you how did you fund this venture of yours, this dream of yours to create this incredible company? Well, it was great difficulty. I've always, <laughs> always said that was the hardest part about boat building was getting the funding, or at least for us it has been. Yeah. Particularly. Um, I mean, we focused on wooden boat building for the first 20 years of the company. Uh -huh. And so um, it was really until the early 2000s when we started working with the uh, different metals. And when I say uh, wood, a lot of composites involved. It's not your okay. traditional wood built, wooden, wooden boat building. Right. In fact, the, the types of boats that we build and the way that we build them, there's less maintenance on them than the aluminum boats or the steel boats that are around. Gotcha. Substantially, actually. That's surprising to me that wooden boats have less maintenance. Yeah. Well, the way we build them uh, in the 70s, it was really developed what was considered cold molding, but it's a it's a way of structurally building a wooden boat, but it, mm. yet it's sheathed with uh, with resins and uh, a non-structural layer of glass to, so that you could just put like an automotive finish on it. Wow. It sounds like you know a lot about the boat making process. I, to be real with you, I actually thought that you you all bought these pre-made and then you just did the cruises. So I'm even more impressed now that you built all of this because it's yeah. the most beautiful boat I've ever been on. Oh, thank you. Um, so how did you end up getting the funding then for building all of these? Well, we, we had been working. Uh, first off, we, we the first boat that we built, we we went high and dry looking for funding to do it, the boat that we yeah. put in Newport in 1994. Mm -hmm. And we wound up working with the local bank that had become familiar with us from other uh, projects where they had funded the, uh, the long term, but not, not for us. Right. But they knew us and they liked us and they trusted us and it was a, it was a local bank out of Hudson. Okay. And uh, they just, uh, they helped us out. So you so, got a bank loan, and that's what yeah, started the yeah, funding. Yeah, they actually allowed us to, essentially, uh, because we didn't we didn't have any funding on our own. Right. At the time, it was probably a little unique and perhaps uh, a little bit over the top for the banker to allow us to use our own profits from building the boat to mm -hmm. consider to to be considered the the, uh, the approved of the loan. deposit on the boat. The, wow. Like the twenty. 20 or 30 percent so or whatever really was required so it sounds like you really took a risk because you didn't have the oh money. everything was up on the yeah hop. yeah no everything was uh everything was committed and how did you handle making a risk like that i think a lot of people they want to do something like what you did but they're they they have this fear that prevents them from actually just trying it and signing a a loan or uh, applying for a loan and getting that loan and saying i'm going to pay this back with the profits it takes, it, it takes a lot to be able to do that. So you must have known that you were going to make it work, right? So did you have a, a business plan already ready well, to we, go? Well, we certainly created a business plan, and, and we made the numbers look good because so it, we, it, you, never, you never know for sure. I mean, certainly it's a business. There's no guarantees you're going to be able to pay it back. But mm -hmm. um, uh, it, 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 you, you take a shot at it. 
you look at the numbers, can we get this many people on and charge them this much and are right. they going to keep coming and is the business going to grow and actually the first business in Newport, it took us years before we really showed a profit and right. weren't, weren't continually subsidizing the, the business to keep us there. And per, per boat, it's probably the most uh, profitable right. uh, uh, venue that we operate in. And with New York, I mean, you don't just have the cost of maintaining a boat. You also have the dock charges, which are substantial. So you started in Newport, and then did you expand to New York? Right we after? started in Newport in 94, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I was an upstate kid, so I looked at downs, I looked at New York City, and I always said, I'm, hey, if somebody asked me where I'm from, I'm from upstate New York, not yeah. New York City. <laughs> but uh, you know, in the late 90s, I, I started coming down here, and some folks started really encouraging us to come down, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, where Newport was very possessive, the folks there, the competition was uh, very possessive of their turf. When we came here, we had mentors coming out of the woodwork. The competition actually said, when I was going to Chelsea Piers, they said, why don't you come down to North Cove? Mm -hmm. If everybody's down there together, we'll draw more people, it'll grow the business, we'll grow this little industry of ours a little bit more. Yeah. So it was, that was a totally new experience for me, and I just I was thrilled with New York City. I mean, so people were really welcoming here. It's absolutely, here. yeah. That's, see, New yeah. Yorkers aren't all mean. Everyone always says we're mean. <laughs> we're not. No, no. That's wonderful to hear. Big. So, big plus. how long did you have to? Um, how many years did you have to work in Newport before you could fund New York City's venture? Because the dock charges alone, I know how much they are in uh, North Cove. Uh, are tremendous. So you yeah. really have to, it's a very calculated risk coming here to New York City. Yeah. But I'm glad you were welcomed so nicely. That's great. Yeah, well, and Chelsea Piers was growing at the time and they were very welcoming. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, I suppose, the, uh, the art world in a way where they're trying to build up an area and they'll help subsidize a little bit. Chelsea Piers was a, has always been a wonderful landlord. Mm -hmm. And back then, our, uh, they were very generous in helping us get started. That's great. So it's, uh, it's grown since then, and uh, I think they were very happy that they uh, worked with us the way that they did back then, because Absolutely. it's been good for everybody. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about um, marketing, because you know, you, you, now you've made the boats, you've expanded into multiple locations. Um, we know how you funded it. How do you get the name out? How do you market it? Do you, what tactics do you use? Well, I mean, to, to me, uh, um, really the best uh, form of marketing is, has, is and has always been the folks that get on the boat mm -hmm. and, and what they do and say when they get off the boat. Mm -hmm. And today with social media, that's so much more important. The event of reviews was mm -hmm. really big. And back, we started uh, working with a company, a uh, ticketing company, in around 2004, I suppose. Fair that was Harbor. one of the first ones. They didn't exist. Oh, okay. I'm fairly confident they didn't exist. The company was called Zerve. Oh. And they've since gone out of business, but they, they really uh, saw the light with reviews and were way ahead of the curve on it. Mm. Uh, probably, you know, before people were heard of TripAdvisor. Yeah. And reviews. It was uh, 16, 17 years ago. And um, it really caught on. And, and they, they pushed for the reviews. And so we would have like thousands of reviews wow. out there. Nobody else would have any with this. They, they, it was really wonderful. But it was a great lesson and a great, uh, 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 just, just a, a great way for us to, to find out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just paid very close attention to those reviews because it was really a tool for the company as totally. well as a sales tool. It's for the, the best company. feedback, you it know, really even is. if positive reviews are great, right? That's what we all strive for. But, but reviews that have suggestions are actually really helpful yeah. in improving your business model. How did you come up with the name for Classic Harbor Line? Uh, well, Classic Harbor Line wasn't actually the original name. We started here as Chelsea Excursions, but then we, then when we, in 2005, when we built Manhattan, mm -hmm. we decided we were 
moving beyond Chelsea excursions, and yeah. it was now going to be, we were going to we were going to really make an attempt to increase our little fleet here in New York. Mm -hmm. We felt we we could and. So we needed another name, and uh, suppose it was uh, uh, process of elimination and finding <laughs> yeah. the one you you didn't like the least or something. I don't know. Uh, I guess it could um, be that for but, sure. Uh, the uh, the boats have a classic appearance to them. Yep. And it's just uh, yeah, it just kind of followed up that uh, that was the most desirable one we could come up with. Um, I wanted to get into licensing and certifications that you need because I imagine with um, running a company like this, you need to be Coast Guard certified. You need to have all different types of qualifications for everyone that works on this boat and then to make sure that the boat is safe as well. So how do you go about that? What do you need to get started if you want to get into this type of industry? Yeah, well, it's interesting because it really has evolved from running one or two boats to now when there's up to 100 part-timers here, not necessarily 100 employees, many of whom are part-time mm -hmm. uh, in the summer. And uh, so uh, crew training is really critical, but in, just in terms of the actual licensing, mm -hmm. it's all about the Coast Guard for us. And okay. we we'd been working with them for 10 years before we built a boat that we we're going to operate ourselves. Yeah. So we're very familiar with the requirements. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's... Um, so uh, if someone's new to it, though, where would they find the requirements that they need? Like the Coast Guard website, maybe? Yeah, I mean, certainly on the Coast Guard website. Yeah. Uh, and there, there are organizations, Passenger Vessel Association is a wonderful resource right. uh, to, uh, to, to, to be involved with and, and very supportive. You're always out at sea. What's the scariest thing that's oh. ever happened? Have you ever had any close calls? And you don't have to say necessarily with Classic Harbor Line, it could be just all of your life. Well, sailing offshore has had some interesting experiences. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My actual first offshore experience was on a little 24 footer that we sailed from uh, Biscayne Bay to the Bahamas. Ooh, nice. And uh, a little boat and uh, these heavy northern winds tend to go clockwise. So when it went clockwise and it came down to the south after blowing hard out of the north into mm -hmm. the Gulf Stream, which travels north and creates havoc. And yeah. We said, well, this is the time to go because we've been waiting for about a week. Yeah. And we got out there and it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It counterclocked and came Ooh. back out of the north and uh, it was a miserable time. But we had a similar experience uh, a few years ago, bringing America up from Key West, where we really? got caught out in a, a, what was a near hurricane, was 60, <gasps> 70 knot winds. And How big were the waves? They were up to, uh, there was funny, there was a NOAA ship uh, that we, afterwards we pulled into Jacksonville, okay. and they said that the winds were up, uh, the seas were up to 30 feet. <gasps> oh uh, my gosh. Because when you get out in the Gulf Stream and you get the winds counter to the, Seas, it gets gets pretty nasty out there. Yeah. So it was just a rough night, a very very rough night. But it put us put the put the uh, put all of America here into a real sea trial. That uh, that's the one that got that's stuck the in one. there. And oh, it was man. it was a uh, uh, wonderful thing. It didn't make a sound. It was just it was scary because it was very dark and blowing and big winds. But it was the boat didn't creak. It just all right. Well, you know it's solid. Very so solid. your boats are not going anywhere if it can survive those type of winds yeah. and those yeah. uh, waves. Um, hiring people is a challenging for a lot of companies. Um, you've managed to do it very well. And clearly you said you don't take credit for some of the ideas of the excursions like the sushi sale. Um, but how do you hire the right people that come up with great ideas that complement your strengths? Well. It happens over the years, but mm -hmm. I will say that our general manager here, Sarah, has been with us mm -hmm. since 2001. Okay. And she got her captain's license with us, and she took over managing the business really uh, around 2003 as the day-to-day -day because I'm up in Albany at the boatyard. Yeah. And um, I'm quite certain that uh, along with uh, others in our team that have been here for, for years and years, I'll give them the credit for that, and I'm very grateful to have them because it's uh, it's really a 
you know, it's, it's all about having the right people. It totally is. And that's something we've heard consistently with School of Hustle episodes, how important it is to choose the right employees. This year has brought about um, challenges that most companies never imagined that they would experience. I work in the tourism industry. I own a tour company. I understand what it's like um, to suddenly have everything pulled out from under you. You operate Classic Harbor Line, which relies a lot on tourism. So how has Classic Harbor Line adapted to this new environment that is hopefully temporary? Well, it, has, it is a struggle. And um, you know, one of the things that uh, when, we, when we first came to New York, we thought we were going to have a little tourism business like we had in Newport. Mm -hmm. It was all local that supported us, and we couldn't oh. afford advertising here, yeah. basically. So it really did evolve through local local folks and word of mouth. Before there was a lot of social media, yeah. um, so uh, in dealing with it now, where it has evolved, and a lot of our business, uh, a much larger percentage of our business. I would say for the first decade we were here, I was saying 90% of our business is local, tri tri-state wow. area. Really. And um, it, it has evolved since then. Yeah. And uh, we do have, or did have, a, a, a lot of international and, and national tourists from all over the country as well. But mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's really a survival mode. Yeah. I put us almost in the category as the restaurants where basically um, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're back to relying on local New Yorkers to mm -hmm. help us out here again. So mm -hmm. that's, our, that's our focus and uh, hopefully, uh, I'm sure we'll we'll get through it. You'll get through it. I mean, if it's anything like what I saw on Saturday, the boat was not overly full because it was safe amounts of people, um, but it was enough. And I was really impressed that in this environment, you still had that type of support. And there's so many people on that boat that I just heard them talking. So you know you can tell where someone's from. Um, yeah. You can tell if someone's a New Yorker. <laughs> and a lot of them were New Yorkers, people yeah. from Long Island and people like that. And I think this is a time that we all need to support our community and, and get out and, and try things that are just in our own backyard. Yeah. Um, so I really do encourage um, anyone that lives in New York or Newport or Boston or Key West, yeah. your four locations, to check out Classic Arbor Line. They're, I mean, look at this. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? What's next for you guys? Uh, well, you know, 2021 is going to be a, a year of recovery, so <laughs> yeah. we're, we're always thinking about it. We have uh, more boats on the drawing board that we'd love to build, uh -huh. and uh, so we're, we have plans, but uh, they're, they're definitely on hold for probably the next uh, season or so. For sure, for sure. Yeah. I understand that. You know, I really appreciate the, uh, the idea that you're coming and joining us and uh, uh, are an enthusiastic supporter. Very enthusiastic. I'll have to pay more attention to social media and <laughs> check things out. I, I, I rely heavily on our crew for that. And I, I, hey, I, don't worry about it. You I don't make partake. the boats well, that's, that's what you excel in. Okay. <laughs> so that's all for this edition of School of Hustle. Keep up with us on all of our episodes on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you stream and download podcasts. And if you like what you heard today, please leave a review. Share with your friends and subscribe to our show. We'll see you next time. Bye.